Hello, and welcome to the 25th episode of Around and About Temecula. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jeff Lawrence. Temecula's history is very important and is highlighted on our city seal, old traditions, and new opportunities. Temecula truly values its past. In fact, I've often heard our city dignitaries and residents talk about how Temecula still has a small town feel. So how do we keep this small town feel in a city with over 100,000 residents? Well, a big part of it is preserving our past. Today, we'll hear from a very special preservationist and a place of origin that her and her husband have spent a large part of their lives preserving for generations to come. Hi, I'm Rebecca Farnbach, and I am so happy to welcome you to Vail Headquarters today. This is a really special place. Well, it's a special place in my heart, but it's also considered the heart of Temecula. One journalist in the 1990s was saying the Vail Headquarters is the heart of Temecula, and I'll tell you why I believe so. Well, for one thing, this was the first town of Temecula. When Old Town came in, it was called New Town because this was where the general store and the post office and the road were. Well, the road is one of the main features of this property. When you come to Vail headquarters, you've probably seen the stagecoach that gets driven giving rides to children and, and other visitors. It's actually riding on the old Butterfield stagecoach trail. And it is the only portion of an urban segment of the trail in the United States in existence that has not been asphalted over or built upon. So it's really a, a precious, precious thing to have here in the middle of Vail headquarters. But what I want to tell you is our story. So in the late 1990s, there were these broken down old buildings and an outcry from the community, tear those things down, they're full of disease, they're an eyesore. But there were a few of us who knew the history of these buildings and we said, Oh no, not on our watch. We're gonna save these buildings no matter what it takes. So we banded together and formed a group called the Vail Ranch Restoration Association. Now mind you, we didn't have money to put into it. We just had passion and we knew the, the background. So we contacted the state of California, the county of Riverside. We even contacted the fledgling little town of Temecula. This wasn't even incorporated into the boundaries yet. And we said, wouldn't you like to restore these buildings and make this into a, a park? And each party that we contacted said, no, 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 no. Okay, so then what do we do? And we considered Old Town San Diego and how it is a commercial district with a historic theme. So working with that idea, we advocated to save the property, and then we decided we would go from there to determine how the buildings would be used. Well, to stop some of the tearing down of the old buildings, we actually had to sue the current owner. So once they had our attention, we developed a huge lawsuit we filled a banker's box full of all the documents and photos to tell our story of why this property is so important. And six months later, the county and MDC Vale settled with the Vale Ranch Restoration Association. And the terms were four acres set aside, the buildings that were torn down, the wood and everything would be saved and could be reconstructed and that this would be used for retail and the entire district would look like ranch. So the settlement was in fall of 1998. And if you've lived in Temecula for very long, you know that nothing was happening here until about 2016. And then very slowly this property was made grid patterns of, of 
sewers for the first time and um, telephone things, you know, everything they have to do underground to make a property usable. Also, some of the buildings had to be disassembled and put back together. And those were my beloved buildings that I wanted to save and the others wanted to save. But anyway, it's all for the good. Look at it today. Look at it today. And you'll see there aren't any like big box companies. These are all mom and pop businesses that are here. And it's been a thriving, wonderful place for people to come. So the last and most latest part of our story is that the Temecula Valley Historical Society has just now completed the paperwork, the application to make this a National Historic Site. We are so excited. We think that we're going to get approved. If not, we'll work on it until we do get approved. So look forward to seeing a brown sign on the freeway that says historical site this way. You know, when I am out here for Starlight Bazaar on the last Friday night of the month, there are so many young families. There are so many people who are just enjoying the music and the atmosphere. And it just makes my heart warm. One evening I was at the Historical Society antique store on the property and my husband Daryl came in and he said, come, come, come with me. And he took me by the hand and he said, just look. And, and there under the stars was this really magical place for people in Temecula to come. So whether you come on a Starlight Bazaar or you come on a Sunday afternoon when we're running the stagecoach down the old stagecoach path or running the kitty train on Tuesday during farmer's market, it's magical. Vail headquarters has a very special place in my heart since my family has strong roots in Temecula. My late father-in-law, Gene Tobin, ate in this very cookhouse while working here when it was operating as Vail Ranch. And Gene's parents, Tony and Mildred Tobin, lived in this valley long before anything you see today was built. In fact, Tony's parents arrived in the Chihuahua Valley in 1919, and Mildred's grandparents, Amos and Maggie Kolb, homesteaded to the Temecula Valley in the 1890s. Every time I stop by Vail headquarters, I can't help but think of them and what Temecula must have looked like back in time. My family and I are grateful to have been able to hear these oral histories from Tobin family members over the years. And I'm sure you have some great stories and memories of your own in Temecula. Talk about a small town feel. Well, that's all we have for this month's show. Until next time, I hope to see you around and about Temecula. I still like to, to restore things. I still like to find old things that were part of our history. Just some things that date back, you know, over 130 years uh, that can be saved, shown, and uh, and displayed. Uh, my legacy is that. You know, I think when I came here, volunteerism was just huge. I mean, everybody volunteered. If you weren't commuting, you were volunteering. I mean, it, it was just amazing the volunteers that showed up. And, uh, and that kind of, after we became a city, that continued on. And uh, we had some of the most faithful volunteers for the Vail Ranch Restoration Association and the Historical Society. And uh, that's a legacy, I think, of those early years when there was no city. But I hope we don't lose that volunteerism um, I, I get a lot of satisfaction out of volunteering. <laughs>